How's it going, everyone? I'm Nostalgic Dave, and welcome back aboard the Nostalgia Train. So, still feeling a little bit under the weather on my end. Um, and actually, so is Amber. Uh, well, both Amber. All three of us, Amber, Aaron, and I are. So, we're all kind of separated today. Although, the real reason is that Amber is spending time with her uh, sister right now. Which I would definitely... I, I think she should. Um, as for Aaron goes, well, he's probably busy with his own coding, and, which he does do a lot of, which, happy for him for that, and I know that was DoorDash or something, I don't know. I know that he's at home watching, binge watching something. Anyway, I digress. Let's push forward and do Sayori's route. Now, I know I'm going to get the words wrong here, so I have in front of me a list of different words. Or Sayori, I, I think. Sayori Words DLC Plus. There we go. All right. Personality. Whoa. Random ad just popped up on my phone. Okay. So, sadness is one of them. Empty, I'm assuming, is another. Yeah. Uh, secretive? No. Question. Happiness? Yes. Hurt? Yes. Hurt? Yes. Um. I want to say bliss, but I think that's Yuri. No, yeah, it, bliss is bliss is Sayori. I don't know, man. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not good at this. Okay. Actually, I usually don't have this up here, but my voice is really not being nice to me right now. I'm going to try to... <clears throat> well, this is what happens when you're sick, and you try to do this kind of stuff. Anyway, um, I'll, 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 I'll try to keep an active, good tone going. Um, What else do we got? Tragedy? Yes. I'm getting lucky with some of these guesses. Uh, chocolate isn't hers, I'll be shocked. Wow. Chocolate is not Sayori's. Uh, as I said, I'm shocked. Clumsy is. Um, joy, maybe? Okay, at this point, just scatteredly choose. It's going to be Sayori regardless. Okay, now that we've gotten Sayori for our first round, let's go. Hi, Candy Fox. Hi. Glad to see you didn't run away on us. <laughs> Hold on. I want to check something really quick. I was actually checking to make sure I didn't log into someone else. <laughs> that would have been bad. Um, I didn't. Nah, don't worry. This might be a little strange for me, but I at least keep my... Why am I reading this again? Skip. Uh, my brain is dead, okay? I mean, it normally is anyway, but come on. Oh, man. Looks like no one wants to be bothered today. I slumped down into the nearest desk. How am I supposed to occupy myself with something literature related by myself like this? I guess I could always read some of the book Yuri gave me. But I'm feeling a little too tired to read. I could probably 
fall asleep right now. I close my eyes and end up listening in on Sayori's conversation with Monica. Probably not. Oh gosh. Alright, Pink Fox, you win. I can't do that voice right now. I'm just going to read it. I can't really do voices right now. We're probably going we're probably gonna seem really lame compared to all the other folks though. Hmm. Well, we can't give up. The festival is our chance to show everyone what literature is all about. For the record, the reason I say that, Amber hates it when I do that. The voices I usually give them. Monica's works, but I can understand why she would dislike Sayori's. The problem is that the idea of a literature club sounds too dense and intellectual. Ow. But it's not like that at all, you know? Like, literally, I can't do any voices right now. I had a hard time doing voices two days ago when I had to do Nino Kuni. It's just gotten worse up to this point. We just need a way of showing that to everyone. Something that speaks to their creative minds. That doesn't solve the problem, though. Eh? What do you mean? Even if we come up with the most fun thing ever, nobody will come in the first in the first place if it's a literature event. So it's more important to figure out how to get people to show up in the first place. You know? Yeah. And after they come, we can do the thing to speak to their creative mind. What's this? Sayori is taking this really seriously. It's rare to hear her deliberating like this. Huh, that's a good point. In that case, do you think food will... <laughs> Maybe for dudes. I mean, if you're... If you're looking for an orgy, then sure. Yeah. If not, then... Probably not. But what kind? Ah, uh, well, I guess we could... Cupcakes! Oh, that's the most you're getting out of me for her. <coughs> that strained my throat, if I'm being honest. <laughs> Good thinking. Natsuki would love to do that. Ah, uh, you're right. Natsuki makes the best cupcakes. That works out perfectly. Wasn't why you suggested it. Cupcakes speak to my creative tummy. What? Cupcakes it is then. I'm hungry. Anyway, we still need to work out the details of the event itself. Yeah. I find myself smiling. Sayori is still her usual self. But therein lies the unexpected reason I admire her. Unlike me, who has trouble finding any mo motivation at all, Sayori can put her mind to things and make them come to life. I suppose that's why I end up letting her get on my case about things. I can't help but wonder what it would be like to see the world through her eyes. Hi! You're awfully close. I open my eyes to find Sayori's face filling my vision. I nearly fall out of my chair. <laughs> sorry. Wait. Actually, I'm not sorry at all. It's your fault for sleeping like that. Well, it's not like there was much for me to do. Seriously, I feel like I have to have my voice this close right now. That's how bad my throat's getting right now. This isn't the napping club. Does our school have a napping club? Oh. You're staying up late again, aren't you? 
Now that you're in a club, you're now that you're in a club, you're gonna have less time for anime, you know? You'll need to get used to it. Don't say that so loud. Cause apparently it's so embarrassing to like anime. I glance over my shoulder to see if Monica overheard. It's true though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey. Liking anime is not bad. I know, I know. You're always looking out for me, Sayori. <laughs> Jeez. I'm gonna keep doing that and I'm gonna strain my voice more than needed. Anyway. That's what I do best. Okay, normally you guys won't see this, but... For circumstances like right now, I kind of have to. That's a problem. What about you? You look out for me better than you look out for yourself. You're still oversleeping every day, aren't you? <laughs> not every day. Lol. That's not very convincing. How many days this past week have you gotten up on time? That's... It's a secret! I knew it. Come on! At least give me the benefit of the doubt. I can't even... I can't even... Uh, uh, I can't even do that. Look, Sayori, it's written all over you. Huh? Sayori glanced at me. Not literally. You were clearly in a rush this morning. Look, your hair is sticking out all all around here. I run my fingertips down the side of Cyrus's hair, trying to straighten it out. Man, you really need a brush for this. My hair is just really hard to get right. I won't fall for that. It is more than just your hair. Look, your bow isn't straight either. And there's a toothpaste stain on your collar right here. I try to wipe off the stain with my finger. But nobody would ever notice that. Of course they would. Nobody's going to tell you about it because they don't want to embarrass you. Fortunately, I really don't care about that. Ouch. Hey, you meanie. You don't even keep your blazer buttoned up. Seriously, Sayori. Why do you think you don't have a boyfriend? Ow. Huh? That's super mean. How am I doing this voice? Sorry, but you'll thank me later. Okay. <clears throat> Let's see if I can actually try to speak up a bit, but not by too much. I start to button her blazer from the bottom. Once you see how much better it looks, you'll change your mind. Close up much? I don't know how I feel about this. I seriously don't. I don't know. I have mixed feelings. <laughs> this is so funny. What is well, I was just thinking how weird it is to have a friend who does these kind of things. Huh? But don't say that. You'll make me feel weird about it, stupid. It's okay, though. I'm happy we're like this. Aren't you? Why do I feel like that's bull? Uh, I, I guess. Hey, be careful. The button might come off. Why is this one so hard to close? I struggle to fully close the button near her chest. Does this thing even fit you properly? <laughs> I don't want to know the answer to that. It did when I bought it. <sighs> if you ever buttoned it, you would have noticed sooner that it doesn't fit you anymore. What are you smiling about? He means my boobs got bigger again. <laughs> Okay. Alright. Whatever. Don't say that out loud. <laughs> anyway. You look much better now. So. Uh, why does it feel strange to see Sayori's blazer buttoned up like that? 
I don't know. Answer that for yourself, why don't you? But it's so stuffy. Is it? Ugh. It's not worth it at all. Okay. Sayori hastily unbuttons her blazer once more. Phew. That's so much better. Sayori puts her arms out and twirls around. So if I keep it unbuttoned, then I won't get a boyfriend, right? Uh. What kind of logic is that? Your logic. Why are you saying that like it's a good thing? Because if I had a boyfriend, then he wouldn't even let you do things like this. And you take care of me better than anyone else would anyway. So that's why I'm keeping it unbuttoned. Stop saying all these embarrassing things. How stupid is this guy? Huh? I didn't say anything embarrassing. Jeez. Well, anyway. Just focus on trying to wake up a little earlier. Only if you focus on going to bed earlier. Fine, fine. It's a deal. <laughs> I guess we really are better at taking care of each other than we are at taking care of ourselves. Yeah, I guess so, huh? Apparently. So maybe you should come wake me up in the morning. You're doing it again, Sayori. Aw, but I was joking this time. Man, it's impossible to tell with you sometimes. Okay, everyone! How am I doing this? I'm not, kind of, but at the same time I am. I, I'm gonna stop. Okay, everyone. <laughs> Monica suddenly calls out. Why don't we share the poems we wrote now? Yay! Big thoughts. I can't wait to read yours! Yeah. Same. I fail to sound enthusiastic. But Sayori still trots away to retrieve her poem. By the way, you remember to write a poem last night? <laughs> yeah. Oh. Oh. We're out of the dialogue now. Go to Sayori? I'm definitely most comfortable sharing the Sayori voice. Wait. Is this... Is it really the same? Are you sure you don't like it just because I wrote it? I wrote it for Sayori, so what's with all the extra dialogue? I guess I already had Sayori's poem? Huh. Okay. Natsuki's response is... Well, yeah, I'm not even gonna try at this point. I'm not even gonna try. Voices be damned and mic be shown. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> It's about what I expected from someone like you. It's a little blunt. Well, excuse me. Okay. Why? It's like I, It's not like I said it was bad. True. True. It just didn't evoke any emotions. So basically, it's not cute enough for your tastes. Do you want to get smacked? <laughs> I'll pass. <sighs> Well, anyways, I guess I need to show you mine. Not that you'll like it. Yes, I've seen it before. And the rest of these are the same. Show Yuri. Well, it looks like Yuri's is all the same. Oh yeah, Yuri's, yeah. Looks like I've seen all of Yuri's dialogue. And Monica. What's the difference on her? Hi. I like this one. Makes me think of something Sayori would like. Is that so? You and Sayori are really good friends, right? I wouldn't be surprised if you had those sort of things in common. Oh well. We may be good friends, but Sayori and I are actually really different. Okay. Well, that may be the case. But maybe there are also some similarities that you wouldn't expect. 
way she talks about you, it sounds like the two of you really care about each other's well-being. Even if you show it in different ways, it ends up being more similar than you'd think. Yeah. So I think that's the kind of vibe I get when reading your poem. Huh. You sure you're not reading into it too much? <laughs> I could be. Oh gosh. I sound like Yuri. But in any case, Sayori's writing has kind of a gentle feel to it. I could tell that she likes exploring with emotions, like happiness and sadness. Who knew that someone so happy would enjoy sad things too? Yeah, that's totally unexpected. Well, to each their own. You shouldn't be afraid to experiment a little bit either. And skippy time. Skippy time, skippy time. I feel like I'm, oh geez, this. Is this the argument? Oh boy. Sayori, help. N Natsuki? Natsuki glares at me, drying up any words I had in my mouth. So instead I turn to Yuri. Yuri? But Yuri's expression is so defenseless that I can't bring myself to say anything to- Okay, Sayori, help! Huh? Yeah. Everyone's fighting is making Sayori uncomfortable. How can the two of you keep fighting when you know you're making your friend feel like this? He talks. Well, that's her problem. This isn't about her. Wow. That's a dick thing to say, Natsuki. I agree. It's unfair for others to interject their own feelings in our conflict. Oh my gosh. These. <sighs> Unless Sayori wants to tell Yuri what a stuck. <sighs> Y'all need to make up and kiss. Okay? Actually, don't do that. Not right now, at least. I mean, if that's what they're into, sure, go ahead. But otherwise, she would never. It's your immaturity that's made her upset. Oh. Excuse me? Are you listening to yourself? This is exactly why... Exactly why nobody lo- uh, Oh, boy. Natsuki, Yuri, you guys are my friends. I, I just want everyone to get along and be happy. My friends are wonderful people. I love them because of their differences. Natsuki's poems... They're amazing because they give you so many feelings with just a few words. And Yuri's poems are amazing because they paint beautiful pictures in your head. Everyone's so talented. So why are we fighting? Because, well, you guys have no reason. Shut up. Also, Natsuki's cute and there's nothing wrong with that. And Yuri's boobs are the same as they are. Shut up. Big and beautiful. Ah! Uh, why don't we embarrass everybody in the room while we're at it? Sayori? Is Sayori Sam's triumphant? That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, Monica, we're all bewildered by this. I didn't even need to read that. Monica stands behind her with a bewildered expression. Oh, make some tea. Yuri rushes off. Natsuki sits down with a blank expression on her face, staring at nothing. So, this is why Sayori is vice president. I whisper to Monica. She nods in return. To be honest, I might come off as a good leader, and I can organize things, but I'm not very good with people. Yeah, you proved that in the side stories. I couldn't even bring myself to interject. As president, that's kind of embarrassing with me. <laughs> nah, it's not like I can blame you. I wasn't able to say anything either. Well, I guess that just means Sayori is amazing in her own ways, isn't she? You could say that. She might be an airhead, but sometimes it's weirdly suspicious that she knows exactly what she's doing. 
Not really. It just means she's gone through those experience type things before. I see. Take good care of her, okay? I would hate to see her get herself hurt. That makes two of us. You can count on me. Moving on. I'm not even going to say what's on my head. Monica's on my mind. I can English. Monica smiles sweetly at me, causing my stomach to knock. Such a genuine person really does make a good president regardless of what she says. If only I could get the chance to talk to her a little more. Okay. Okay, everyone. Skipping things. Skipping things. And we're here again. Oh, boy. Uh. So we've got a tone. But that's not what. Oh, that's alone. I read alone and I thought it said a tone. I'm stupid. Uh, peaceful, I think. Yep. Excitement. I'm going to bring this down a little bit. Precious. Okay, silly as well. Wow, daydream. I know, I knew daydream was going to be there. I think Misery is another one. Yeah. Broken. Uh, anxiety, I think? No. Oh, no, no, no. Nickel, I think, is one. Two more of Sayori, and then I'll just spam. Doesn't really matter after that. It's hard to find the right words, though. Clouds, maybe? Oh my gosh. Uh, forgive, possibly? Just spam the rest of them. Oh, destiny? Possibly? No. Stars? Possibly? No. Yes. Scars. Yes. Yeah, that's mostly Sayori. I will say that. Skip time. Wow, there's a lot going on right now. I guess at this point it doesn't matter whether... I mean, it doesn't really matter where it is. Usually I speak louder than this, but again. Throat, head, nose, all the things. Big box, big box. Sayuri suddenly comes up to me. I'm gonna go get some supplies from another classroom. Wanna come with me? Supplies? From four. Well, you know how the festival is coming up. Me and Monica were gonna make some posters and stuff. So I need to go find some crayons and markers and glue sticks. Ah, uh, I see. Sure, I'll go with you. Yay. Okay, Monica will be back soon. We'll be back soon. Ah, are you going with Pink Fox to get the supplies? There's no need to trouble yourself. I'd be happy to go with him. Aw, oh, but I wanted to go. It's so much fun exploring empty classrooms and stuff. <laughs> okay, okay. I was just, it was just a suggestion. See if you can find poster paper too, okay? Okay. Oh my gosh. Ready, Big Fox? Yep, let's go. 
Sayori and I exit the club room. I follow behind as Sayori hums and skips around the hallway. Honestly, it feels like I'm taking a kid to the mall or something. Sayori finds pleasure in the simplest things sometimes. Hey, Sayori, what exactly are we doing for the festival anyway? I'm not sure how you would make an event out of literature. That is a good question. <laughs> Me and Monica have it all planned out. Don't you worry. Is that so? Yep. We're going to do a poetry performance. A performance? Of what kind? Well, everyone is going to take turns on stage and recite their favorite poems. Ah, that sounds kind of dull. Big Fox, you're not thinking about it the right way at all. It's not just about reading poems. It's about performing them. Like you say the lines of the poem, like, between my... I don't know how you would get one off the other, but sure. The last remaining flower beckons to me. Oh, I twist the stem, freeing it from the clinging roots. Where is this going? Caressing the final joyous moment between my fingers. But to what ends have I summoned this joy? For now, when I look in every direction, the once prosperous field before me is but a barren wasteland. That is dark. Like that. Sayori. How do I put this? I'm sure it's just me, but it's impossible for me to take you seriously when you talk like that. Uh, you meanie. I'm working super hard on this, you know. I know, I know. I just meant that it's a pretty unordinary contrast to your cute self. Don't say that, it's embarrassing. But I guess that means I'm doing a good job. Yeah, I guess so. I'm so excited. Okay, the festival is going to be so much fun. Sayori spins herself around in the hallway again. Hey, Big Fox, this classroom over here is empty. Let's begin the mission. Mission, eh? It's been a long time since I've spent time with Sayori like this. But in the end, she hasn't changed one bit. She's nothing but a ball of sunshine, drawing happy vibes from the world around her. It's a pretty nostalgic feeling for me. As the years went by, I began to hold myself up in my room more and more. The glowing adventure Miss Sayori brings about a special sort of feeling I forgot I had in me. Good. The two of us enter the classroom. Sayori heads straight to the closet and I follow. Let's see what we have in here. Crayons! Sayori pulls a box full of crayons off the shelf. They're the best brand, too. They're kind of dirty, though. Sayori starts pulling various crayons out of the box, reading the color names. Alright, that's one now. Don't get distracted. Don't get distracted. We still need to find... Wait, I'm looking for my favorite color. Fine, fine. Then at least move aside so I can look for the poster paper. Huh, I dropped one by accident. Smack. Yeah. Sayori bends over and smacks her for- Ooh. Ooh. You okay, Sayori? She falls to the floor and the crayons spill all over her lap. <laughs> you okay? My forehead. Sayori clutches her forehead. Jeez, Sayori. That's just like you, isn't it? Come on. Let me see. Since Sayori is sitting on the floor, I grab her by the waist and Pull her out of the closet. You have to move your hands, Sayori. But it hurts. Just do it for a second. Wait. Oh, 
I see it. It wasn't really noticeable at first, but it's there. Okay. Thumbnail making time. Eh. Sayori slowly releases her hands from her forehead. I gently brush her bangs to the side. Ow. Sorry. There's a huge red mark on the center of her forehead. A bump is starting to form as well. Man, that's gonna swell up. I should find you some ice. Pink Fox? Where would I even find ice? Where would I even find ice around this time? Uh, I guess a cold drink would do. You don't have to. I'm fine with looking like a unicorn. Oh my gosh. I'm sure you would be, Sayori, but come on. Even when sing from the pain, Sayori makes a silly joke. <laughs> what are you saying? I'll be right back, okay? Uh, okay. I pat Sayori on the shoulder and run out into the hallway. I locate the nearest vending machine. What should I get? Doesn't really matter, since it would be used as an ice pack rather than to drink. But I know Sayori likes apple juice, so I purchased that one. You know, because why not? In just a moment, I'm already returning to the classroom where I left Sayori. She has one palm on her forehead and is using the other hand to clumsily scoop crayons back into the box. At least they at least they were already in the wrong spot before I spilled them. Sayori here. I hand Sayori the bottle of apple juice. It's nice and cold. Sayori opens the cap and starts drinking from it. Sorry, what are you doing? It's for your forehead, idiot. Huh. Sorry, I forget. <laughs> Oh, Sayori, what are we going to do with you? <laughs> How hard did you hit your head? Sayori places the bottle against the bump on her head. It stings. If that's the case, pretty damn hard. Just bear with it. It'll feel better soon. Looks like you cleaned up most of the crayons. So that's good. Hey, Pink Fox. This kind of reminds you of growing up, doesn't it? Eh? What do you mean? You know how we used to play outside all the time? I would always try to keep up with you. You were kind of oblivious and so... I'm not surprised. He's still oblivious. To this date. Like I usually fell behind or had trouble climbing on the things you do. But sometimes when I tried to do things I couldn't, I would get myself hurt. Ugh. I'd fall and scrape myself and get bumps. And I would start crying really hard. <laughs> and you would rush over as quick as you could. You would try really hard to get me to stop crying. It was almost like you blamed yourself and were afraid of getting in trouble with someone. That sounds familiar. Even though it really wasn't your fault at all, you know? Did I really do that? I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. You don't remember? Apparently not. Come to think of it, maybe I do remember a bit. I guess I was always so focused on my games that I didn't pay enough attention to you. Ouch. So in a way, it was my fault. Kind of like this time too. If I wasn't rushing you out of the closet, you probably wouldn't have hit your head. Big Fox, I don't think you realize it. But you're always thinking about other people. Yeah, so are you. Even after all these years. You're rushing to help me, even though I'm just being clumsy. You're really a sweetheart. So don't call me that. Um, it's gonna happen. Bruh. And I don't really do this kind of thing all the time. Why do I doubt that? I guess when it comes to you, it just feels natural. Before I even know it, I'm treating you like that. 
I guess that's what happens when you've been friends for so long. Uh huh. Yeah, that's really all it is, I'm sure. Really? Maybe you're right. Big Fox, I was so glad that nothing's changed between us. Do you think it'll be like this forever? Forever? If I'm honest to myself, there's no telling where we'll each end up for college or after that. So it wouldn't be fair for me to make any promises. Yeah, fair enough. But, well, I hope so. It's been this long already, right? I can't imagine you ever changing, so my hopes are up. I'm so happy. Sayori has a whimsical expression in her eyes. I can remain silent for a moment. She's so silly and clumsy on the outside, and when I see her deep in thought like this, it makes me not want to disturb her. I guess we should go back. I don't want to worry Monica, you know? Good luck with that. She's going to see her forehead either way. Not if I hide it under my bangs. <sighs> well. Sayori hops to her feet. Ah, she clutches her forehead again. Don't stand up so fast after hurting yourself. Ah. Well, I guess it's too late now. Anyway, anyway let's go. Follow Sayori out of the classroom. Sayori plays with her bangs to try to hide the bump, but without much success. In a moment, we make it back to the club. Oh, you're back. Good talk. I was just about to I was just about ready to start with sharing our bones. Eh? Sayori, your forehead. He's fine. Don't worry about it. I was playing with crayons and and smacked my forehead into the shell. Okay, wow. Uh, uh, anyway. Were you able to find everything we needed? Uh-huh, I have it right. Yeah. Sayori frantically glances around herself. I forgot all the stuff. Calm down, Sayori. I have it all right here. Found the poster paper too. <laughs> Sounds like you ended up doing all the work, Big Fox. Oh well, Sayori. I failed to come up. Oh well, Sayori. Yeah, I failed to come up with some excuse for her. I made it an adventure. Yeah, that. <laughs> okay, okay. In any case, good work. I'll start working on the posters tonight. Me too. Okay, everyone. Are ready to share poems? Looks like we've got mine. After making sure the crayon box is closed tightly, I return to my seat. And poem time, which we will do next time. Um, once again, I only have the microphone like this close to my mouth this time just because of the whole me having a cold thing. Hopefully that'll blow by blow over by next week, and it is getting pretty late, I don't want to strain my voice. Not that I'm not doing that already. I digress. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode, this kind of dry episode of Doki Doki Literature Club Plus. If you liked it, make sure to push that like button, and so far you can't see me anymore. For some weird reason, if you do. Uh, if you really like this kind of stuff, consider subscribing to the channel. Have a suggestion for a visual novel you'd like to see on here, or a horror game? Let me know in the comments below. Want to check out another visual novel we've done prior to this? Click the link at the bottom right hand corner, train to take you to that destination. Or if you missed any of the stops on this ride, click the link across right here and the train will take you there. In the meantime, this train's off to its next destination, but we have to catch you guys in another ride. Bye!